<coughs> Hi everyone. <coughs> I'm gonna stop choking. Choking. This is Natalie Journey and Natalie Jean. This is chatting with Nat. Um, so today we're gonna have Kendra Erica. Um, because of my brain, I have brain fog. <laughs> you know, I originally scheduled her for a blog talk, and I realized. It was an IG, so she's going to come on here, um, but before she does, let's play some music. Some of her music. <clears throat> All in my is the world, sitting on a girl. Electronica mix, and it's just it's it just sets the tone, you know. It's just to be like to be open to be free, you know. And walk, I basically just walked into a virtual club with you dancing. <laughs> yeah, no, but the, I, I the, the the funny thing is, is that I love that song. That is one of my favorite, most favorite songs out there in the whole world. And it's a shame they don't play it that much, but I love the fact that you have, I'm going to put that on my playlist because I'm just like in love. You just brought me back to some wonderful memories of so many things. Oh my God, I just love it. You are awesome. Thank you so much for being on Chatting with Nat. How have you been during this pandemic? Uh, I mean, the, the pandemic really hasn't stopped me, really. Okay. I have, have minor, minor adjustments have had to be made, right. sure. But like like everyone else, um, I feel like we've all had to adapt um, and adapting and 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 moving with the with the wind is something that I, I feel I I do I do well with and so I was able actually last year because I was in the in the height of, of it all um, I was able to to still write and record just okay. virtually and remotely so because pre pre um, kung fu flu um, <laughs> <laughs> i was always back and forth and traveling but you know last year that kind of i kind of took a little bit of a of a pause okay but i was able to switch all my collaborations over virtually and remotely which then kept the momentum going which right. is, is like hallelujah thank thank god um, amen 
But yeah, now I'm just, I'm getting back out there. I'm starting last year in, in the summer when things were opening up. I was in Vegas shooting a video. Then I was in Atlanta doing a live performance. And oh wow. my, all just, you could just tell that they were so happy to be out of the house and they were like all on top of me. And I was like, I hope that the vodka is killing what, what it, like, <laughs> <you're> like oh. <laughs> I hope the vodka is killing stuff. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, that was really fun. Um, yeah, not in, I've just been in New York, LA. Um, and yeah, I've been, uh, and also back and forth to, to Pittsburgh, which, um, the Sextronica After Dark Mix was made in, in, in Pittsburgh by, 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 by Chico. Um, make shout out to him, but yeah, just getting that, that juju and mojo back is really, has been really good for me. I mean, I can just like feel it. I can see it in my, in my body, you know, when, when you're getting back into what you love to do so actively, it, it, it shows and it radiates and I'm just happy to be back or, or not, not back, but just at that, at that place that I really need, need to be. As, as an artist and I, I mean what we've learned about I love well, what I've learned about being in a pandemic is that you know we all need physical touch we need to hug so what's I mean you've been out there already but what was like what was it like like the first thing that you wanted to do because <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna hug but I'll ask for permission for the, to hug you oh yeah no I mean with with, with me um I think because the the way that the universe works, and I and I am a big believer in this, and, and, and like the the law of attraction, and 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 however you want to put it, um, I feel like that the when when I was getting back out there, people wanted that as well. Right. Right. And just they they uh, what the universe says is is it sends you people with very similar interests and and wants and needs, and I feel like that's what needed to happen um but yeah and then then I met some other people that were a bit you know you know sketched out by right by, by the whole you know ambiguity of of it all um and so it was just like simple like fist pumps or like right elbow nods but other than that like that was just like a small fraction of the people that I was surrounded by but mo most of the people that I was working with it was it was just like let's just get this shit rolling done. let's get it done damn it. yeah um, did you, did you do any live streaming? What? Did you do any live streaming? Live streaming? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, cause I, I, I live in, I live in South Florida in, in the Boca Raton area and I, and whenever I would be home, um, and not traveling, I would have, you know, steady gigs at, at, at local, you know, la lounges, bars. Right. Um, and, you know, that, that all came to a halt and then you know, with the whole restaurant in industry taking a sort of turn and sort of weighing out their expenses. And, right. and um, I had to, I had to just make sure that I kept my instrument polished. So that's why I did, you know, weekly live streams. So like it, it's right. and it fit and it, and it filled, it filled the void of, of not having those, those live performances. So I was still able to you know, throw in or, or do my thing, so to speak. <laughs> I love, yeah, live streaming was good for me because um, it helped me remember some of those lyrics because if you're not practicing, you know, I'm like ancient. I don't look like I'm a hundred. But... Like even, even live streaming, I would, I would forget lyrics and I'm like, is this like, is amnesia a, a thing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I would start having amnesia and forget lyrics and I'm, and it's just because of that, of that, of that simple aspect of not being able to perform being. Right. Right. Back. I completely get, well, I had my cheat sheet after a while. I was just like, okay, I don't care when I can have my music in front of me. I'm going to sing it. A lot of the songs that I, I know, the ones that I've performed over and over, but I'm like, I'm too tired. It's been a pandemic. Let me just do what I want. You're still going to hear me sing. Yeah, I'll look down every now and then if I'm gonna miss, or I'll just make up some words. You're not going to know the difference. Yeah, just, just for what for for what it is, just take it. <laughs> just, exactly, you are getting it for free. <laughs> yeah, you're just 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 take it. Um, I, I want like, did you do any like sort of like Venmo? Because I, this is the kind of um, question, like every every um, performer, you know that that 
that had to, you know, step down from their, their live gigs. But um, did you do any like Venmo tipping or anything like that? No, uh, my stuff was free. They better love that because after the pandemic, that, that stuff is not happening anywhere. There's going to be tip jars, Venmo, Cash App, all, Zelle, all the ones that are out there is going to just going to flash at the bottom. <laughs> Artist needs money, right? Yeah, well, I mean, to 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 fund the uh, the future projects that we'll that we'll have, definitely. That no, 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 no. I agree with you. Um, <laughs> so. How would you describe your music? My music is, it's like, it, it's, it's a reflection of chronologically and sequentially throughout the, the years. It's been a reflection on, on who I was and who I am at that particular time. Um, I used to do a lot of bubblegum stuff back in my in my mid teens, and then I and then I then I was like, um, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this phony ass like bubblegum shit. <laughs> so then I started move, like transitioning more into that like Lana Del Rey, and I was like, ooh, I like. Right. At that time, I was singing at, at at you know lounges and piano bars in my when I was like eighteen, nineteen, and then that sort of Lana Del Rey, you know, sultry vibe. Yeah really clicked with me so I started doing more songs like that and then and then it wasn't until I was introduced to Jason Dowman from my my billboard promoter I was introduced to him through my former artist development forum um, in New York and and he said why don't you why don't you come out and write with my writers because your voice just has this like this dance um, house you know p potential right and so that's that's when I was that's what that was my initial uh, entryway into into the the whole Los Angeles circuit of, of writers, and that's when I met Damon. And you know, from then on out, I've I've written five top tens with with Damon, and also with another another co writer who is also in that sort of dance, but yet um, R and B field. That's where that's. Break the Wheel, Break the Wheel was written by uh, Kevin Wilde and myself and two other songwriters. Um, but yeah, that's like, I would just describe my music as a reflection of who I am right now. Um, I, I'm getting back into my dance roots with, you know, the the, the songs that I have coming out in the awesome. fall. Um, but, you know, Song of Hope and Avalanche, those, those are just like, at that, at, at that time, we're, we're, we're where we were at during the the pandemic it was just a, a reflection on i just want to break through i just want right. to be like cathartic and have this this sort of melodramatic explosion like song of hope like we all just need yeah. that or avalanche like i just want to break through i want to break this ice piano like i just want to get back out there um and i think that with those two songs it really spoke it, it spoke for what it needed to speak for how well do uh, uh, female artists, I would assume that female artists do pretty well in the dance genre. Is that true? Yeah, I find that to be, I find that to be the, the, the most constant case. Mm. And I, I don't know, I don't know why I think I'm trying to figure out why, and maybe it may just be like, um, cause we're, cause we're, we're naturally upbeat creatures. <laughs> And we're outgoing. Like, <laughs> you know, I just joined this 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 live stream, and you were just dancing. <laughs> that's why, that's why, females are are sort of filling up the the, the dance pool more than more than male artists are. But I mean, there's, I mean, there are some wonderful male dance artists, and um, but definitely i'm i'm still trying to figure out why maybe it may just be <laughs> like uh, the, the the female voice is just mm -hmm. a better a better um sonic sonic um reach than you know a a lower a lower like or tenor or baritone right. voice um but hey i mean mu music music is a is an ever evolving entity and right however however it goes it, it'll go that's, I agree with you, amen. But I love the fact that women actually dominate dance because women mm -hmm. have 
for women have to frighten in, in all of the other genres. I was telling somebody else, I mean, in, in the country music genre, they are just now um, playing uh, women country artists at, at a 50% rate. You know, now it's 50-50, men, women. And then, then before it was, they would only play one female uh, per radio, radio slot. They wouldn't even play that many. And that, that's just ridiculous to me. I think music is a place where there shouldn't be any issues. It just should be love and peace and compassion and equality. But yet somebody always finds a way to, to put some negativity in it. And I think that's very sad. Yeah, well, I mean, with, with, with anything, there, there will be, there will be a, um, a, a political snake throughout the whole, throughout the whole thing. <laughs> you know? it, sucks. it really sucks. So what is your writing process like? My writing process it it stay it stays uh, somewhat constant, but throughout all of the the collaborators and collaborations that that I work with, it it all depends on what we start with. Do we start with uh, the writing the the melody? The, do we start writing the lyrics? Um, I mean, I can I can say that. Um, with the with the songs that I have coming out in, especially this the song Rapture, mm. that's with, with with Chico, um, that song was written with me in mind, so I didn't have to conform to a track or or a uh, right. or or be or be boxed into a certain railroad. Um, like we we created the the railroad, and I and. You know that that was just that that spoke volumes to me because that's that's how music, you know, should be originated, and that's right. that that's what will cut through and, and make you feel and make you feel like that that legitimate sense of of um of impact. Right. Um, so, but with with Damon, it was it was we I. I he presented a track to me, which I always just like fall, fall on the floor while listening to it. I'm just like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> You're just like, oh my God, this is that. This, nasty, this nasty drop right here. I love it. Like this beat is just like booming right now. Um, but then that's when, that's when we, I mean, that's when everything would just piece together. We would have melodies all mapped out, lyrics mapped out. Um, and being that we're two empaths, I mean, we can basically finish each other's sentences. Um, every, every collaboration has been, has been what it has been. Um, but what I like to do is, is as soon as I get in the studio, I like to have like really like, I, I don't, I don't just like to have these like frilly little conversations. I like to have deep and meaningful philosophical conversations because then that's what will br like bring out the the most meaningful yes. of lyrics and the, and those concepts that that'll just you know take take the listener's mind and and, and senses to a whole new level. So, so what what inspires you? <laughs> <laughs> what inspires you? I mean, I know that I've written songs because of I wrote a song called Matt just because I was walking by a bus stop. So are, is there something in particular or are there any song of yours that was inspired by something that you saw? Were you moved by something? Hmm. Well, what, com what initially comes to mind is when I wrote Break the Wheel, that was because I heard it on a little show called, and I'm being facetious, a little show called Game of Thrones. Um, oh, a little show. A little show. <laughs> a, a, a little flick, a little daytime special. Called, <laughs> um, but I heard it. I heard that 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 phrase, "Break the wheel," from um, from uh, Daenerys Targaryen because she was talking about how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, she was like, I just want to break the wheel. And I, I heard that and I was like, can I like uh, <laughs> uh, take that from you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Just take it, just take it a step further, with, like musically. Um, but just that concept alone spoke volumes to me because, you know, I've always been, 
I've been a bit big advocate for, you know, for for freedom of voice, freedom of speech and not being able and not and not being so controlled by, you know, entities that think that they know what's good for you. Right. Um, and I've all and me being a, one and only child to an independent artist. I mean, in, independence is something that I like to hold very um, stand firmly by. Yes. And so um, just and Great, like like breaking the wheel, breaking the cycle, breaking the standard, breaking all these like social little um, these, these social agendas, um, just breaking through all of that and just just letting it be known that who you are is exceptional enough. So that's yeah, why I, no, I just preach, preach it, because <laughs> I'm always telling people to be yourself, be your authentic self. No one wants to hear the BS. They want no. to see who you are. I mean, with all of the social media platforms, one thing I've learned during the pandemic, because I've done so many damn uh, conferences and, and workshops, is that they want authentic people. Authentic. This is what people vibe to. Because they, they're tired of the nonsense. They, they're tired of the unreal. You want to, they want to feel what you feel. They want, to, they want to get into your life. You don't have to tell them everything about your life. But they want to know you. And once they get that, they're hooked. They're hooked. Well, I mean, like, I feel, I feel especially what we've experienced in, this, in, in the past, you know, year mm -hmm. over year is, you know, and I'm not, I'm not here to, like, you know, bring a, a firing squad to this whole thing. But, like, people are just tired of the celebrity bullshit that right. is that is that that is being you know shoved down our our throats like what people want are real people like people have have redirected their focus more towards their their families more towards like keeping keeping quality people in in, in their lives um and just basically silencing the noise and the distractions and especially focusing on our on our health what's going on around us making sure that we focus we focus on the people that are actually going to make a difference um and that's that's just something that that i i stand strongly by and um and not operating within you know the one inch crust like right like deeper find what's on the inside like don't don't just eat the crust on the pizza like <laughs> <laughs> eat it on the outside damn it um, um, I love that. I absolutely love that. That's my that's my whole um that's my whole like credence right there. No, but you know what? I agree with you a hundred percent. And I always tell people my problem with the media and radio is that they would rather shove everything down your throat. So basically, they just want you. And I and I like these artists like Taylor Swift, Lizzo, and all that stuff, and Jay Z and Beyonce's and blah blah blah. And I like them, but the problem is it played too much. Like I always, I tell the story, they played Lizzo too much. In the beginning when you're marketing a song, I know they have to do overkill, that's fine. But after a while, when you get into your car in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and the same song is playing, Natalie's gonna turn you off. Now I can't, I can't listen to Lizzo. There's, I can't listen to any of her songs anymore. I know, which is, which is why I've done like I've turned off, I've turned off the the radio. I've turned off, you know, the news. Like sometimes, I'll, sometimes I'll I'll watch just like tune in and see like what's going on. So I'm not like complete like, oh, what's going on in the world? <laughs> so like, <laughs> I want to be knowledgeable. But, um, but I've done my own research for what I want to listen to. Right. I, like, I, don't, I don't listen to mainstream anymore. I listen to you know, mix shows and, and deep house and, you know, jazz, like underground jazz and just like the, that, like deep jazzy housey mixes that, that just, you know, put you in such a vibe. It's crazy. It's just like, I want to take a bubble bath. I want to pour me a cocktail and I just want to relax. <laughs> I can just I love that. feel something. I don't want to be told and shut down my throat. I want to feel something. So that's you know just. Kudos to you. Everybody <laughs> listen to her. Listen to her. Because I'm always, yeah, I'm always saying how if it were up to radio and indie, and radio and the internet and, and all these other places, they would basically say there are only these 
people on the planet that do music? Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Adele. These are the people they would tell you. You wouldn't I'm, think that there are thousands I'm, of indie artists out there. It's it's just, it's just, you're like you're only you're only allowing people to see that small fraction. Um, and so, but there's so much other things you can learn from many different artists and people. Um, and, and I always, I always say like, if it weren't for, for 24 hour news and social media, people would be able to think for themselves. So. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> because one thing I've learned in the past six years, boy, <laughs> if you have an opinion, your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like every that the problem is everybody wants to be right. I'm a person, I don't, I don't want to be right. I will explain something to you. And in the end, we can agree to disagree. I think everybody is allowed to have their opinions on something, you know. Um, and, there, and there can be, there can be this, this, um, this, this grand level of respect. Right, for exactly, exactly. No, I agree with you 100%. So let me ask you, did you watch the Grammys this year? I did not. <laughs> so, so I get to ask you this lovely question because I think that you can answer this I, question really well. I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw the, I saw the the thing that what, what's um, the thing I've been talking about. I, I mean, I've seen the memes, <laughs> I've seen the clips, right. and I'm like, and I'm like, um, why, why isn't this on Pornhub.com? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. So <laughs> So, so, so let me get your take on things. My cat is trying to knock everything over. I'm going to bring, <laughs> bring the uh, cat. Um, so, uh, oh, my gosh. This, oh is, my gosh. This, this is Michael who's trying to knock everything over. He doesn't listen. Uh, he, he looks like my cat. My cat's on the really? right. I, I got him this year because... Unfortunately, my cat, my other cat passed away in November. And actually, he has a sister that's uh, somewhere around in the house. Um, and uh, they've been driving me crazy. I forgot what it's like to have a kitten. Um, or kittens. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't sleep for months once I got them. I'm like, did I really want this? Um, <laughs> but with the Grammy thing, so... Here's, here's, so I was on Facebook one night and I was just watching this whole conversation about the whole Megan Stallion and uh, Cardi B performance. I hadn't seen it. Went on YouTube and said, okay, let me take a look. And so I'm like, okay, here's the thing. Everybody's, a lot of, obviously, if you're extremely conservative, you would not have liked that performance at all. You would have said, ah, oh, no. And, um, but see, that's, part, that's Cardi B and Megan Stallion. That's their genre. And that video has been out for years, blah, 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 whatever. So people right. know what they're going to present. And so I said, you know, if you're going to be mad, you can't be mad at the artists. You got to be mad at the Grammy because they knew what they were doing. It's all about money. Okay. And they knew you put that stuff on there, people are going to be, ah, ah, ah. but however, this was the lowest ratings that they ever had, the Grammys. Mm -hmm. And so... And I look at the performance, and I don't like to tell uh, artists how, how to create what they do, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Every woman can decide what empowerment means to them. Exactly. You know what I mean? And then what was interesting, there was like one guy that was really like for them and said, you got to leave them alone. This is who they are. This is the genre. This. And then the other women were like, nah, they're sluts. They're this, they're that. And I hate the name calling because it's extremely unfair. And I had a friend that contacted me because she made some comments and she felt like she was being bullied. And she said, you know, as a woman of color, I really want you to give me your perspective on this because it, it, it all of a sudden uh, became about race because, you know, a lot of people didn't say anything when Madonna was out there risque or Cher or some of these men's doing, men doing these things. 
And I gave her this perspective. I said, with black women as a whole, they're stereotyp stereotypically people think there's a sexual blah, blah, blah on all this stuff. However, you have to think about this. During slave time, uh, the master, slave masters or whatever would use their bodies, rape them, take their children, do all this stuff. So sometimes when you look at this, you have to remember that what they're trying to show is this, this is their body and they're going to do whatever they want with it. And that's how they're going to demonstrate it. Do we all have to agree? No. <laughs> do you have to like it? No. And there's one thing that people can do. There's a turn off. There's that button on the, the, the clicker. You, you say, Bleh! bye, you're gone. So my question for you being saying all of that, do you think it's right for people to determine what artists should do creatively? Well, I think my, my question is to is to the, the the powers that be because they're they're dictating they're dictating what is on those award shows. That's right. It's not it, it's not the people that it's not a question of the people dictating what, what these artists should, should do. Right. Most of these artists, you have to understand, are assigned to huge, massive labels. That's and right. Labels, and these labels are, um, are basically being told by whatever powers at B to push agendas. That's, That's right. That, like, most of these artists come from traumatic backgrounds so they're easily to mind control um they, they're they're out of touch of with reality you, you can right. see it by how they speak especially right. like you know Nicki Minaj and Cardi B like most of them them have like glitches um right. when they're yes. on the red carpet um but yeah most mo and most of the most of these celebrities have just and I if you if we want to get into the, the spiritual realm they've sold their souls mm. they've They've sold their souls. They're just a, a, a vessel now to promote agendas, which is which is what which is what True. these shows have become over the years. Right. The win the winners have already been chosen. The Thank songs are, have already been chosen to Thank put you. an agenda. Um. Now with with other award shows in the past. It wasn't until around like the late nineties that, that we saw like a turn in the sort of like weird sort of um, you know, political Hollywood like in bed together thing right. happening. Um, so but in past award shows it was just about the music and the excellence. People were just do it for the music. There was no like Watching award shows now, it's basically like reporting, reporting a narrative via song and dance. That's true. That you're a hundred percent correct. I mean, I've been to the Grammys at least six times in my. Uh, my I, I went. I went once, and honestly, Nat, I, <laughs> I, I just feel the energy. It was. It was. It, it was very strange. Like none of these people were smiling. They all looked like miserable to be there, probably because they were being handled and told right. what, what to say. Um, but like, I, f I felt like I was the only one. And even if they had a smile on, on their faces, it was just so plastic, right. like, like placated on, on their faces. Um, but that's, but that's what's been happening. And more and more people just need to start waking up and realizing that. Um, because at, th at this particular point where we are in, 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 in our country, the people just need to have the power back. Yeah. And yeah. that's, and that's where, that's where I stand. Um, and, and my, so that's like my, <laughs> to answer your question, that's my, that's my take on the whole, on the whole Grammy s situation. It's something that I've been learning to become more vocal about because in this day and age, like you don't want to upset the powers. No, of, who cares? Who cares you about upsetting? <laughs> you know, it's, it's called, it's called the first amendment is still in the constitution. <laughs> right. That, I love you. My God, you and I would click well because I've gotten uh, in trouble so many times at the Academy for saying <laughs> stuff. Uh, um, because I've had conversations with the vice president of the Grammys, um, about lots of things um, that I find that are unfair. Um, 
<laughs> There's so many things. You, you and I need to have a side to chat about that. They, they, they ain't seen nothing yet because um, my platform is in uh, ding, 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 child trafficking. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hello. Uh-oh. All right. Ding, ding, uh, ding. Ding, ding, Children ding. Children in, in education. Ding, ding, ding. Um, <laughs> and child trafficking. Yeah, they, like... <laughs> Wow. Like, all I'm saying is, <clears throat> buckle up. <laughs> all right. You're headed here. This is my sister in music right here. I love you. You speak your, you know what? You stand your ground. You're doing your thing. You're speaking up for other people. I think it's extremely important. I really think it's extremely, people just don't understand. And, 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 and the thing is that bothers me is when mainstream artists start to whine about the fact that they didn't get nominated. And I'm like, dude, you're a mainstream artist. You're making millions of dollars. You're out there. You get nominations all the time. And because there's one time you didn't get a nomination. And here, all these other indie artists are trying to be seen and heard. And we can't even get a little edge in. Edge in. It's, mm -hmm. well... Like like I said, in, um, independence is is what will break through because yes. I if I feel that fake it to fake it to, to me out and truth break break through it is in. Oh my God! I just uh, I love people like you because we need more people like you. Um, we need more people and, like and likewise, likewise. We need like, more people that to speak up to stay silent is just stupid. <laughs> Yeah, no, like we're, we're, we're not, we're not docile and compliant creatures. We no. are animals and we need to be heard. Amen. Amen to that sister. So what is it? So let's go on to pleasant topics. What mm -hmm. is it that you enjoy about being an artist? I enjoy the, the, the simple, the simple pleasure in, in just being, being who I am. I'm um, like and 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 seeing things for how I see them. I see things very differently. Um, but that's that's all going to change with this whole like awakening that we're going going to go through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, the one thing that I enjoy about being an artist is traveling, experiencing new people, new 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 sites, new environments. Right. Um, good or bad because then I could just learn from them right. um, and and also I just like being a very like centrally in tune with who with who I am um and that's that's really important but mo most of all it's it's being out in the world and connecting I love that connection are you going to, are you gonna sing something for us oh yeah are you well, gonna, you're gonna sing Oh, I'm, I'm gonna sing. You're gonna sing. <laughs> when we talk about singing. Sing, sing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do my, my latest one, Pure Love, that okay. just released. All right. Pure Love. Let me fire up the mic. Fire up the <laughs> mic. She's gonna fire up the mic. <laughs> There's a song for everything. <laughs> I know. It's a, I do that all the time. I can't help it. I can't help it. So. I can't help myself. There you go. <laughs> She's getting some water. <laughs> I'm like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm over here like, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> check, 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 check. Okay. My check one, two. My check one, two. All right. This is this is pure love. All um, right. Here we go. <laughs> Baby, let the lights go out. Yeah. We fall, never 
driving it's just yes you're cruising no yeah now it's like an earworm <laughs> i'm gonna have it in my head all night long which is good because oh. that's what you want dance in your head <laughs> now tell us tell us what it feels like to be a number one billboard charting artist it feels like <laughs> like well um I've been doing it. So I've had it so many times that I'm just. Uh, it feels like. <laughs> it just. It, I mean, I, I'm trying to like, it, like, come up with a with a feeling. I mean, it's it's definitely a a, a milestone for sure. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, that's not the mountain that I want to really like get to. I want to get to like higher mountains. Right. So, almost like, okay. Like yes, there, there there's some gratitude in there for sure, but right, it's like right, right. okay, let's see where we can go. <laughs> yeah, that's well. Yeah, there's so many more things that you're you're going to do because my God, your music is awesome. What is a quote <laughs> that you live by? 
It's actually one that my, my dad always, he's in the other room, so like, you know. <laughs> it's actually one that, that he that he taught me very, very early on, like when I was like, yay hi. Um, and it's uh, and it's hard work beats talent and talent doesn't work hard. Amen, praise Jesus. <laughs> That's true. That's true because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you don't put the effort, especially in music, music is just a lot of work, damn it. It's just a lot of work. And so, yeah, if you don't put the effort in this industry, you're just not doing anything. You're just going to stay stagnant. So I completely agree. Another one that I, that I, that I, uh, that I came up with um, oh. is, uh, is, the money tastes great, but the freedom tastes even greater. Yeah, I love that even more. That's true. That's true. Money can be good, but and listen, if you don't have the freedom to create and be yourself, mm -hmm. a problem. There is a problem with that. No, I agree with you, hundred percent. You all awesome. want to make sure that that your house is like. It looks good on the outside, but it looks even greater on the inside. Mm. It's like Man. you could see you could see like a very glossy mansion and be like, "That's cool." But then when you look inside and there's like no furniture in there, it's kind of like all over the place. Right. They're doing like they're still tearing down. They're doing construction. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're I'm like, oh, I don't know. Uh... No, I agree with that analogy. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. Just like you. Phenomenal. Um, fantastic. Well, likewise to you, like, honestly, right back at you. Like, I'm taking this and I'm just like, <laughs> play <laughs> like, Here, catch it. I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, Kendra, I've had such an amazing time with you. You're just like an awesome person. I knew you would be. <laughs> it's been, well, it's been, it's been, it's been, tremendous <laughs> it's been a real um we're very like-minded people so yeah. <laughs> i'm going to follow you i might become a stalker do you mind if i become a stalker <laughs> <laughs> do you mind it's so funny that you see because i have um i get some direct messages sometimes that say like so sexy your body or like send pick of bobs and i'm like usually i <laughs> Bobs. <laughs> You're like, Bobs? What the hell is that? Bob. I mean, You're like, like, no, you cannot see my Bobs. No. You cannot you, see you my I don't know why people do I don't Well, I don't know why men, because women don't really do that. Do that. It's just. It's go, just on, on <laughs> porn, go on Pornhub. Yeah. <laughs> you can find many of Bobs there. I know. <laughs> There's so many. There are different sizes of bobs. Different exactly. colors of bobs. <laughs> but we'll let, we'll let the imagination go where it needs to go. And then that's, that's good. Right. <laughs> let, them, let them just think. Let them dream of the bobs. I am so going to use that word now. The bobs. Have the you bobs. seen the bobs? Have you seen the bobs, darling? Have you seen the bobs? <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Erin. Kendra, Erica, you are so awesome, phenomenal. Thank you so much. I'm going to follow you on your journey. I won't be one of the stalkers that ask you for your bobs. I'll ask you for your music. I will ask you for your bobs. Um, <laughs> it has truly been an honor. I hope you have an amazing night and an amazing week. Let's definitely Thanks. keep in touch. Um, yeah, I want to chat to you, with you offline off about a couple of things. And um, yeah, let's keep in touch. Let's keep let's keep it going. You rock. Let's take it out with let me see the rest of self control. Oh, no, I can still dance.